Having seen on the first tutorial how to get familiar with the Gnu Radio Companion interface and how we can interact with the uh, generated Python graph uh, using the Python snippet, and during the second tutorial how to interact with the IQ stream with a dedicated Python block, let's just see uh, as a final presentation how to interact with external tools um, because Gnu Radio might not be the best suited processing framework for. Uh, finalizing your processing. GNU Radio is uh, very efficient in processing the streams, continuous data, but maybe at the end you want to analyze packets, you want to do a correlation, or you might want to do operations that are not best suited for GNU Radio. So the first approach that we will not develop is using name pipes. We've seen at the end of a previous tutorial how we can use a file source for feeding a flowchart and if you use a FIFO first in first out uh, name pipe under Unix, mk FIFO, then you can actually replace the name of a file with one of these FIFO. More interestingly, we're going to stream data through 0MQ, which relies on TCP IP, so trying to stream data over an internet compatible um, network, and this will allow us to stream continuously data even if no one is listening, such as in a UDP connection. But this will also allow us to address how to change the flowchart parameters using RPC. We're going to conclude with correlation because uh, you will not find a correlator block in GNU Radio and we'll see how we can actually use signal processing for performing the correlation. So the context in which we're using, for example, um, zero MQ is the example here of a ground uh, synthetic aperture radar uh, GBSAR, where a bi-static radar with a transmitter and a receiver are connected to an uh, H3 Search B210 software-defined radio whose data are collected by the Raspberry Pi here. Now in a synthetic aperture radar, range is provided by the bandwidth of the signal being broadcast by radar, but azimuth, meaning the direction of arrival, is provided by the spatial diversity of moving the antenna here along this rail. In this example, we wish to move the whole setup, including transmitter, receiver, SDR platform, and Raspberry Pi, along with the antennas, but only collect data as they are fixed in the location where the antenna position is stable. The control of the antenna is uh, under supervision of a Raspberry Pi, which receives order from the PC collecting the data. So the PC is continuously receiving data, only stores them if the antenna are at a known stable location, sends a command to the Raspberry Pi to move by one step, waits until the antenna are at a fixed location, and then collects the new data. In any case, the SDR stream must never stop, otherwise the phase condition between transmitter and receiver might be lost, so we never want to miss a single sample, continuously recording and streaming, and yet we need to only collect the data when the antenna are stable. To give you an example of a result, here is the antenna location. We've got four targets, uh, here a container, here a building, and actually, funnily enough, this building, which is detected at this location, was built before this Google map uh, image was uh, updated. And we have one final faraway target behind the trees here, which are transparent to microwaves. So how do we actually use at best uh, the various capabilities of uh, GNU Radio to stream the data, in this case to an Octave or Python script, performing the data collection, cross-correlation, and analysis of the uh, information collected by the radar? To illustrate this, we start with a new flowchart, and uh, as again, we start with a signal source, which will generate the data, because again, we're not going to have any uh, hardware in uh, uh, limiting clock we put a throttle block but this time in addition to displaying the time domain uh, oscilloscope output we wish to stream the data so at this point we can save as this guy as the transmitter of data and as we've seen earlier if we just, just run this guy we get an oscilloscope output with the uh, i and q coefficients. Now this, we do not want to collect the data on the same computer, but we want to share them with another computer. So we can call the 0MQ. 0MQ is uh, 
a set of libraries above TCP IP and the beauty of ZeroMQ is that it will guarantee the consistency of the broadcast information so you don't have at the application level to, recon uh, to reassemble the uh, structures that you transmit ZeroMQ will make sure that whatever you're transmitting is received on the other end we have two sets the publish subscribe pub sub uh, the publish subscribe uh, f framework is a UDP like meaning that if someone is listening to the published data they will be received if no one is listening too bad they're lost and uh, uh, that's exactly what we want for the radar application where as the antennas are moving we don't want to record the data but we don't want the SDR to stop collecting information and the uh, TCP like so connected mode is the rep uh, reply request reprec where in this case a client will ask uh, a server for some data and the uh, exchange is guaranteed to be uh, consistent. So in this case of a publish subscribe the only parameter we need to provide is the uh, address which is a URL with TCP something. Uh, in this case we're going to send to the same computer so ourselves is 127.0.0.1 or hello and we need to select a port number which is uh, um, a port bigger than 1024 and smaller than 65,000 so let's take a random port. Uh, the first thing is if we run this flowchart as you've seen that we have not put any receiver yet the uh, data are continuously updated and collected so meaning that uh, this part of the block is continuously running even though there is no one connected to the sink uh, on this side. We might make this a bit more uh, interactive by uh, setting the frequency as a range and as we've done now multiple times, we we'll select this as a range. Uh, we know that the maximum value is separate over 2. The minimum value is minus, but we don't care about this. We're going to put something a bit bigger here. And this is the frequency that we set uh, on this flowchart. So again, we can demonstrate that this uh, flowchart is actually running even though we are not streaming data because the frequency indeed changes uh, when we interact even though no one is listening to the publish. So now if we create a new Qt interface, but this one is using a 0MQ sync, so this one it will be a publish subscribe or so subscribe source, we uh, need to put the same URL as before, so meaning that we collect data on the local host on the same port as we did earlier, and this time we will not put any throttle block because the data are already throttled. So even though this uh, flowchart will warn us that there is no rate limiting block, uh, we know that on the output uh, we are going to limit the data rate with the uh, uh, outgoing uh, stream rate. So in this case, again, we can display what has been received. Now this is going to run in the same uh, GNU Radio Companion framework but of course this could be running on two different computers if we now run this guy over here nothing is going to happen uh, GNU Radio Companion warns us that there is no throttle bot but we know that this is a valid flowchart and if we now run on this guy over here uh, the outcome of this uh, flowchart here we see that the receiver is indeed receiving the data and as we're changing the transmitter, the receiver is changing accordingly. So this demonstrates how we can stream data from um, GNU Radio to external software and the beauty of ZeroMQ is that it's available to so many uh, other frameworks. If we just quickly look on the slides, we've got ZeroMQ for Python, so if you don't want to rely on your remote processing uh, server with a GNU Radio block but with only Python, you can uh, instantiate a, a zero MQ socket with a subscribe. Uh, here we change port, but it's the same story on the local host. And uh, we interpret the array. In this case, it's integers because we did a conversion from floating point to integers. So if you had received data which are floating point 32, you would put an F. So you convert the array of bytes into the right data that you transmitted through the zero MQ publish subscribe. Similarly, you could do the same with uh, Octave. Octave is uh, provided with a 0MQ package 
and in this case you would zrmq subscribe uh, a, a socket you would connect to the same local host and you receive an array of bytes which you convert typecast in this example the integer 32 or to a single float single complex depending on the data that you've transmitted so you see that uh, in this case GNU radio can very efficiently interact with octave or Python or C language. In the C language, you've got the ZeroMQ socket and the same story. So this allows us to efficiently stream data from GNU Radio to external, to in external tools. However, at the moment we're cheating because you see that this frequency is changed from uh, the data source, uh, whereas we wanted to be able to move the antenna from the data, uh, from the software collecting the data. So in this case, these are the uh, stream of IQ coefficients received uh, by the control software and this is the software that should be controlling the antenna position or in this example the frequency not the other way around so in order to be able to change the parameter frequency here uh, we would like to send a command from the receiver to the transmitter and we could of course as we've seen earlier create a TCP IP server in a different thread and since the TCP IP server has access to the setter and getter it could change the frequency variable which has been uh, associated with a setter however a more elegant solution which uh, does not require developing a whole client server is sharing the information as an XML uh, information so a, a format that is easily readable by a computer and in this case we could have a server that waits to receive commands and can change uh, by coding a callback function associated with a remote process control RPC in order to do this all we need to do is uh, launch an XML RPC server in this case it's connected to port 8080 and on the opposite side we need to put an RPC client so the RPC client over here is connected to the same port so that the client and the server are talking on the same port and we need to call a callback function so here the value uh, variable is a frequency so we need to call the callback function setFrec and we need to trigger the callback function when a local variable is changed let's say my frequency my frec and this my frec will be changed by a range so this time we create a slider which is associated with a my frec value which we know to be going from 0 to separate over 2 and we can set its initial value to a different quantity here so this time we have a local variable that will create a callback function associated with the XML RPC client the callback function will, will be triggered whenever the slider is changing my frec function this my frec function will be provided an argument to set frec and set frec here is the same variable name as the frec that we've selected over here so the, the string is important because it's the same uh, variable name that is used in the callback function over here so now if we run this flow chart uh, it starts with a default value of 1000 uh, hertz and now if we run this guy over here and go back to this you see that we display the same value but this time if the client is changing the frequency then the server is changing accordingly so this means that now using the xml and actually we can be convinced because we're going to get some messages on the uh, console from the xml uh, display that some messages has been received and that we have indeed acknowledged the new value that have been transmitted by the client also notice that as before if we run the transmitter and the receiver uh, both sharing data for ZRMQ and XML RPC then we can actually so this is the transmitter uh, and the receiver is going to come here we can actually so not only change using the client and server but we can actually um, send commands through the XML RPC uh, shell inf um, command saying that we want to send on the port at which the XML RPC server is running we call the uh, callback function and we say we want to send an integer with a given value and uh, indeed we see that both flowcharts are changing when we uh, broadcast the value from the shell
So this concludes uh, this set of tutorial about GNU Radio Companion and how to interact between GNU Radio and external software for distributed processing. So the last thing now is we are able to record data on a remote processor that is collecting a continuous stream but only recording when the antenna is in a static position and we wish to know the range to the various targets. How do we calculate a range? A range is calculated by trying to search for a known transmitted pattern and in our case we are recording the information that is being broadcast to illuminate the scene with uh, noisy received data. Uh, in order to identify the time of flight of the signal to reach a target and being backscattered, we need to cross-correlate. Cross-correlate means we multiply the received signal with a known pattern shifted by a time tau, which is varying along the cross-correlation. Now, these two quantities are assumed to be mean value zero, so that uh, when the pattern is not found in the signal, this multiplication will be randomly positive or negative, and the mean value when integrating the energy will be zero, except if the pattern is found on the signal, then the uh, multiplication of positive times positive is positive, or negative times negative is positive, and energy will accumulate coherently. So by using the cross-correlation, we can uh, try and identify the range of a target. Now, if we search in the GNU radio blocks, we will find a header correlate where we can have a digital header and try to find for the synchronization word in the uh, receive bit stream. But there is no cross correlation, meaning uh, uh, an array of complex or real numbers that we wish to correlate with a received signal. So how are we going to do this? In order to implement the correlation in GNU radio, we need to remember that there is a close relationship between convolution and correlation. Uh, convolution is integral of the signal times the received pattern tau minus t, and we've seen just earlier that the correlation is the same quantity but with tau plus t. So the only difference between the two is that in this case the time is running negatively in the argument of the integral, and here it's running positively. So we need to flip the time, and in order to flip the time, we have a complex conjugate of the argument, because exponential of j omega t complex conjugate is exponential of minus j omega t. And because we know from the convolution theorem that the convolution of two quantities is the Fourier transform, is the inverse Fourier transform of the product of the Fourier transform, then the Fourier transform of the correlation is the product of the Fourier transform complex conjugate. That's the important aspect, is that now we have a complex conjugate to subtract the phases rather than add them. So how do we actually run a correlation in GNU radio? So starting again with a, a, a blank flowchart, we can try to make a noise radar by saying we have a known transmitted pattern, and again the known is very important in a radar, it's called the reference channel, and this reference channel will be throttled because again we have no real hardware, but most importantly this uh, real channel will be time delayed, so this delay uh, will be an integer quantity, and this integer quantity will represent the range to the target. Now this delay we would like it to be something that is user tunable, so we're going to create a range, uh, a cute graphical interface range, which creates the delay, and the delay is going to be something between, well, minus n over 2, we're going to see n a bit later, and n over 2. We're going to discover what n is a bit in, in a second. So now we have a reference channel, which is our reference pattern, and a surveillance channel, which is the backscatter signal received by uh, the antenna. And we wish to perform a cross-correlation. Now the GNU Radio Companion provides you the FFT, but you see that the FFT, it outputs here a light blue, which is a stream, and here we have a dark blue, which is a vector. So in between the two, we need to convert the stream to vector as we did uh, when we did the histogram. So we convert the stream to vector over here. Now this quantity here have too much, and the length of the FFT will give us the maximum distance of a target. Indeed, if we have uh, a long time interval between two pulses, then the furthest targets can be far away, but the detection will be slower. So the pulse repetition interval, PRI, gives you the maximum range, and this is this n quantity here, which is the maximum delay uh, that we can uh, separate two targets. So we're going to create a variable, uh, 
with this quantity n and say we're going to set it to 4096 uh, as a random quantity but a power of 2 because it's going to be the argument of the FFT here. So we select a uh, FFT length of n so we need to accumulate n element and by default the Fourier transform is uh, 1024 which we set to n and be careful that the FFT is windowed and the window length must be the same length as the number of elements that we're taking here. The forward or inverse Fourier transform is a matter of convention whether you're taking the time domain sample x and multiplying by exponential of plus j 2 pi ft or my exponen exponential of minus j 2 pi ft uh, depending on the field, it's one direction or the other. The only thing that matters is the IFFT of the FFT is identity. And because I know the solution uh, in this particular case, we need to start with a reverse FFT. Uh, we do the same thing on the surveillance channel, exactly the same story. And then we take the multiply conjugate. So the multiply conjugate is so common that it's given. Again, we rotate with, uh, using the left arrow. And we can connect these two outputs to the multiply conjugate, which is unhappy because this is working on a scalar and we are creating vectors. So we say multiply conjugate must act on vectors. And from here, we would like, we've taken here the reverse FFT in both cases. So now we would like to take the Fourier transform of the result. Instead of taking explicitly the Fourier transform, we can actually take the spectrum analyzer from GNU Radio Companion and again display the n element that we receive because uh, the Fourier transform is a bijective function. But you see here we have an output as a vector and the frequency sinks expect a stream. So we finally need to convert the stream to vector or rather the vector to stream, which is over here. And we rotate using the left arrow. We connect these guys and the default of the vector is to only take two elements. So we must reconfigure to take n elements. And you see that running a correlation is as simple as this. We take the noise source, we have a reference channel, we have a surveillance channel with a variable delay from a user tunable quantity. We're going to take the Fourier transform, multiply conjugate and analyze the, fractum, the, the spectrum. We run this, of course, as usual, we must save this as a Python compatible string. And when we run this, we see here the spectrum, middle button, auto range. So we could have done this uh, in the flowchart from the beginning. And now you see that when we're moving the time delay, here is your correlation. And you see that your correlation peak is indeed moving as we are introducing a delay. So the uh, correlation is working correctly. So this demonstrates how by wisely using the uh, mathematical properties of the, here is the autoscale function. So by, how to, by wisely using the mathematical properties uh, of the estimator that you're considering, you can actually um, compensate for the lack of a signal processing block in the radio companion rather than starting to write your own custom block. To conclude this presentation, the beauty of the Fourier transform is that because it's linear, if we have multiple copies of the uh, uh, transmitted signal, so one reference channel but multiple targets at different ranges, then by summing the output and feeding this surveillance channel with multiple copies, we are going to detect all the copies of the targets. And this is what is demonstrated in this flowchart that we're not going to get in the details together because it's the same as before, but we have a noise source with a follow block. This is the reference channel. And now we see that we have three delayed copies. These are three targets and each one of these targets is triggered by a delay which is generated by a signal source here. One of them is a triangle, one of them is a square wave, the other one is a cosine and uh, the sum of these targets will feed the surveillance FFT and because FFT is a linear process, when we run the multiply conjugate over here, we have a cross correlation which separates all three um, targets. And finally, we take a waterfall in addition to displaying the Fourier transform, uh, which is the spectrum over here. Uh, this time we did explicitly the inverse Fourier transform by using the FFT block. And if we run this flowchart, what we're going to see now is all three targets being detected. So you see here that we have three correlation peaks because we have three time delays. We have only one FFT block that is linear, so it can separate the three contributions. And here are the three targets, one 
uh, delayed according to a sine wave pattern, the other one delayed according to a triangular wave pattern, and the last one delayed according to a square wave pattern consistent with what we just described over here. So these are the three targets that we have uh, delayed by these quantities and which are some theory. Thank you for attention, that concludes this series of tutorials.